La la! Okay. I think we're rolling. Not literally, but I think oh, we're recording. Okay, so I'm just gonna run through my checklist. Uh, have I prepared good for this video? Nope. Is it nearly 2 a.m. in the morning, the night before I'm supposed to air this? Yes. Will I go high poly today? No. Hello and welcome to another episode of the 10 minute mulling challenge. This is gonna be episode 67. Is it 66? Every week I've got one number to keep track on, of and I keep forgetting it. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 66 of the 10 minute modeling challenge. You might already be aware of course that we've got a challenge going in the Infancia Discord server and uh, we're doing some low poly modeling and for month one it was the low poly city, for month two uh, we've got the vehicles and for month three that we're in now, March, we're doing low poly characters and uh, I've submitted a rig, a template with a rig and uh, you model a character based on that rig and you can even animate it if you want. Check out in the description, you've got a link there to the Discord server with an invite. You're very welcome to join. You can join the challenge and join a whole cool group of people there that are doing modeling and game development all together. I'm gonna start switching in some more Unity videos soon. I've been focusing a lot on Blender lately and I'm gonna try to mix both of course. With that said, for episode 66, I'm actually going to use my own template here for the low poly modeling challenge for the character, and I'm going to model some type of a character. So I've loaded the template up, it's right here in front of us, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the template warrior, so I've just got the armature here now. And I have absolutely no clue what I'm going to model right now, I'm just going to wing it, literally. I'm going to just start by adding uh, a cube with the material now, and then we'll just see what type of a character emerges. I've upgraded to Blender 2.92 finally, and I think uh, probably as soon as I upgrade, usually the next one comes along, so we'll see. Hopefully this one should be pretty stable now, I'm pretty sure. We've got a problem here, because I can't really add the default cube, can I? Because if I add a cube here, it's not really the default cube, but it's close enough. We should go the extra mile. Do you know what? Check this out. New, general, this is the default cube. Save proper default cube. Let's load the template back here. And now check this out. File, append, proper default cube, object, cube. Huh? Some of you might say that this is totally unnecessary. I could have just created a cube, but that wouldn't be the default cube. This is literally the default cube that we've imported from a default scene. Can't get any better than that. So I want to start from this one. Ready? Steady? Go, and we're off. Tab into edit mode, A to select everything, scale it down, S of course, bring it up, scale it down even more. I'll, I'll do this very similar to how I normally do my characters, so auto mirror of course, A to select everything, and then we just totally ignore that and deselect it, and then keep that low there, E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude, and it's gonna be a, a clunky, chunky character this time, it looks like. Shift select, I'm gonna make it big here. So select there. E to extrude the leg, S to scale, R to rotate. E to extrude, G to move, E to extrude, E to extrude. Let's get some extra geometry for the knee. E to extrude, R to rotate. E to extrude, big clumpy feet here. And E to extrude. And this clumpy feel actually makes me think of a, like an old school diver with those big metal helmets. I think I'm gonna try to model one of those. Uh, let's see, scale X, so we need even clumpier. I'm gonna do super clumpy. E to extrude, R to rotate, G to move. E to extrude, S to scale, G to move. R to rotate, and E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, S to scale, shut up. I know. E to extrude, S to scale, and mittens here. Size, mega size, scale. And E to extrude, E to extrude, and these I have to, I think, rotate, oh, E to extrude. I'm gonna rotate these slightly to get the thumb thing here going. R to rotate that one, G, E to extrude a thumb, big, thick diver mittens here. Back in the old days, they didn't really have this fancy technology that we got with all these wetsuits and stuff. As far as I know, anyway, so I'm gonna do these hands. Okay, eight minutes on the clock. G and uh, for here, so that's pretty thick, I think. Move that out. And should we, I should probably put some more detail. First I'll do uh, like the diver, is it called a helmet? Yeah, helmet, like a bell helmet thing. So I, I think I'll attach it to the body here. Should I do, I might do control R. I'll put even more detail here, I think first. 
Alt S to scale it out, make it even rounder. It's going to be low poly, but high poly, apparently. And then here we'll do I to inset this one, B for boundary, get that center thing up, move it up. Alt E, extrude long face normals, and bring that in maybe. And this is going to be the shape now of the this head thing. Should I do, should I, I'll, I'll, I'll attach it, I think, E to extrude. And then here we'll do scale Z zero, flatten it, E to extrude. And then I'll put like a an E to extrude again. Here I'll put some E to extrude. <laughs> Like a round thing. It's not really that round because it's low poly, of course, but E to extrude that on, E to extrude, S to scale. Bring it down there. And should we do even, I think, uh, let's see, 650. Okay, I'll do Control R here. And then Alt S, make everything a little bit rounder again. I've got a problem with the feet when I do that. I think I did that in the template thing as well. But nothing we can't fix. There we go. Let's bring all of this out as well. It's gonna look like a space guy, I nearly said, but probably not. <laughs> G to move. Okay, now we'll have to control R there. Can I do uh, I to inset? And can I do circle here? Yeah, that works. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, GG, move that one up. GG, move it down. Sure, I'll do I to inset this one, and then E to extrude that one in, and E to extrude on. I don't know if they had like more viewports or something, but I'll just stick one in the front there. That should do. And should we do a little bit rounder there as well? Yeah, I think so. There we go. A to select everything. I think they were like a leather colored or something. So we'll go for a brown. Am I recording? Yeah. Whew. Thought I wasn't recording for a second there. And um, scale Z. Okay, never mind. I'll have to live with that. It's not perfect. They do, they couldn't make stuff perfect back then anyway. This one I'm gonna do like a brass color. I don't think they had metal. Would that rust? I'm not sure. Control plus, control plus, and shift select this, shift select that one. I'll go for like an orangey brass type of color. And then for the glass here, I'll do some dark blue maybe. And just to break up the look here, maybe this one could rust. This could be a metal thing like this. Okay, and the mittens here, dark, dark leather comes to mind. G, and a belt he needs. Control R, Control R, E, Alt E to extrude long face normals, Control plus, again, dark brown, and then dark brown shoes here. Shift select a bunch of those, Control plus. Okay, I had something else selected. Control plus, Control minus, G, move it to dark. I don't know what the what the shoes were like actually back then. But I'll do something like that. And how am I doing? 431. Should we put uh, control R G and then what is it round enough? I don't know. Now I think what I'll do now is I'll apply the mirror modifier, shall I? And make it a little bit ir irregular, if that's that's a word, isn't it? Yeah. So I'll go to here, I need to tab out of edit mode, control A to apply this one, and then I have to remember now that I've applied it. Control R, I'll do some different shapes now maybe. Control R here, scale, should we do, I'll do proportional O, G, O, G, J, control R. I'm not gonna apply the um, control R, scale, Scroll that on down, R to rotate. I'm not gonna do, if I can even think what I'm saying here. I'm not gonna subdivide it, because I like the low poly look with flat shading. That's just my style, so I'm gonna keep it like this. G to move it, G. I've got proportional now, so we'll do maybe some. G, I've got three minutes here to just fiddle around with this a bit. So I think I'll just, maybe I should put I to inset. Uh, o to proportional off, S to scale. No, that's no good. Maybe I'll do it where it's a bit thicker like this. So I'll do it there, I to inset, Alt S to scale, rotate, and then should we do it here? G, G, G. It needs some sort of a hose as well, doesn't it? So I'll do three, I to inset, so much for low poly again. Rotate, scale, go proportional. Since I'm doing a little bit, 
irregular here. I'll do Control R, rotate, scale, Control R. So often, most of the time, I always do uh, like symmetry stuff. So it feels a bit weird for me to go non-symmetrical here. But we should be good, I think. So breaking the norm scale. I like the idea of like loop selecting that, doing I to inset, and then Alt S to scale it a bit different. Rotate. Here we got. Should we do something here as well? We can do some fake shading here since we've got this palette here. So I'll select these where there's some. I'll just Alt and Shift select all of these and go a little bit darker there. So it makes it look a bit different. Okay, uh, I've got 151. Should we put a hose here on the top as well? Maybe this one will do th that gray color as well. Like a different metal, the rusty metal. And here on the top then, I'll just do I to inset, B for box, or B, okay, no. Am I doing I to inset, uh, B for bound. Okay, I can't do bound. Oh, that's why. Now I forgot that I did enable the, no, or applied the mirror modifier. I'll scale that one down. I'll do circle here. Scale that one. Oh, proportional off, of course. Scale that one. Move it up. And here I'll just do uh, control right click. Scale. Control right click. And then I'll put like a, a fake hose here. That could be connected maybe with some tech to do. Like uh, I haven't really done like uh, simulations of that in Blender so much. You know, of uh, like I think there's like plugins and stuff for cables. I'll just put a little E to extrude, as to scale. Uh, control right click, remember that's a shortcut to do like extrusions. So maybe like that will do. Oh, 40 seconds to go. I'll just control plus that one. And then G, let's move that one to the gray one as well. Should we do these slightly darker since we can? That's too dark. Okay, I should uh, do. I'll apply the modif or the armature. So select the, this one. Shift select the head, or no, the armature. Control P. I've got 16 minutes to. Sp 16 minutes. What am I going about? I can have a sip as well. Should I do? I've got 11 seconds. So now let's make this work. Control P, armature deform with automatic wakes, and three seconds to go. Control Tab into post mode, and E is rigged. It's all rigged. Here we go. Hard to rotate. Let's see if the weight painting works. So he kneels down, that works. And he can lift the leg up maybe, yeah. G, rotate. He'll do a sidekick here. G, pretty agile for a diver. Rotate, or G. Oh yeah, it's the and then we've got the knee, the pole target there, yeah. Arm, shoulder, R. All of that works. Alt R, Alt G. And should we try the animations as well? So we've got the the template includes the walk animation here. Looping on frame 24. That's it. Hide the armature there. So that works pretty good. Diary. It's going to be difficult to see to the sides. I think they had like uh, viewports on the side as well. This one is going to be really restrictive, but so is the actual bodysuit itself. But I'd say that works pretty good. And then we can try the run animation too. So run and that one goes to how many frames? A 22, that one was the 22 one, yeah. And then hide. Check it in this path tab instead here. So that works too. And let's check when we rotate the head here. Normally for a rigid armature like this, the head here, you could argue that it shouldn't actually follow the mesh like this. When he bends his head, this is a solid piece of metal. So that shouldn't really deform. And I don't know if it'll look good. Usually, if it's a small character like this anyway, like we've got in a game, low poly, then it, I'd probably go for it with just let it flex. But if you wanted to apply it so it's totally rigid to just follow the head and nothing else, 
one way to do it. I think I showed this in the last video to, where I was setting up the template. So let's do it again. I'll select the tip there. Control plus to expand the selection. I think that's a pretty easy way to select the whole head thing. And then I have to manually select these and these. And I think I showed this, but Control G, remove from all. Control G, set the active group head. Control G and assign to active group. That forces all the verts now to go to the head. But it's so strong then that it probably won't look so good here. But if you're going to animate it as if it was a diver, maybe you'll get away with it because you wouldn't really move the head so much anyway. You could move it like just slightly because you probably couldn't even tilt the head so much. You'd probably work a little bit more with twisting the whole body like this when you animate them. And I don't know what the walk, we can check the walk animation to see what that one would have been like. Walk. So that looks pretty good still. And this one is one solid piece. Oh, I have to do that. I keep forgetting the loop point there. But there we go. So that still works. Maybe it's a little bit of stretching there that's uh, a problem. Uh, since it's that severe as well, I'd probably consider detaching the whole helmet here. So I'd probably go... One way to do it would be to Alt select, let's see, Control R to do a loop cut here. Ring select that, delete all of those faces. L to select the link now, H to hide it, and then I'll select this. Maybe just scale that one, bring it up, and then I'd cap this one in best way possible. Maybe I would just, you could select these to E to extrude them. I've got auto merge vertices here, and I've also got here, I've got uh, vertex snap to. So if I press G and hold the control key, that will just merge these verts. And then we could cap this as well. Here there's, oh, I should have done the same on this one. E to extrude. Hold the control key, snap these. And here I could just ring select. Maybe I could grid fill this, F3 grid. Fill. That's it. That's another trick as well. You get the interior meshes then. If I would have just pressed F to create a face, it would have created one single face. So maybe this one would have been better if you wanted to have the, you'd like model the body a little bit separate like that. And we can check the, uh, the way the armature works now. So. That's better, but we've got the head thing. Okay, and then I need to tab here. L to select the link, or I think there's a way to invert the selection, but I'll do Alt H to unhide everything. L to select that on H to hide it. And here you could just, maybe grid fill would work here too. Grid fill. Okay, that didn't do it so pretty. So I'd probably do E to extrude it, S to scale it down. Just, I'll probably scale it up again, bring it up. E to extrude it up, maybe S to scale it down. Here you could just scale zero and bring it into an infinite point there. Because it's going to be hidden in there anyway. Alt H to unhide everything and then tab to walk. So that looks a little bit better maybe. Then you've got the, the body is going up under the helmet there and you can see that the helmet's actually detached. So that's one way to do the rigid uh, stuff anyway. All right, so what are you waiting for? We've still got a few days. Uh, it's Thursday now, and the deadline is Thursday, April 1st. It's a bit of a joke, nearly, but that's the deadline. So happy modeling. Go to the Discord server now, join it, download the template, and model yourself a low-poly character. And as I mentioned, feel free to animate it as well if you want to add some animations. And be sure to read the rules. It's very important that you follow the rules if we're going to consider your contribution. So what do you win if you participate? Well, you only win bragging rights and you earn yourself a lot of skills by doing it. So that's why you should participate. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button if you like the video and come back next Thursday for another 10 minute modeling challenge. Until then, bye for now.